In the last video, we um, looked at this intuitive analysis of the uh, three eigenvectors and what they mean. Now we want to make this a little bit more quantitative and um, do some visualization to convince ourselves that this is really the case. So um, we're going to start by studying the effect of coefficient 2. If you remember, coefficient 2 um, is the one that tells us whether uh, the, the season is uh, early or late. So what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, generate a new data frame in which we're basically going to make sure that the re residual after 2 is smaller than 0 0.1, and that's so that we have a good approximation after um, we take the first two components. And then we're going to sort according to the uh, second coefficient. Okay, so we want to, the second coefficient to go from uh, the minimum to the maximum, um, and we also want the approximation after the second coefficient to be good. So this is not going to get all uh, of the vectors, it's going to get just 214 of the vectors, but um, that is enough just to see the demonstration. Okay, so um, if you just uh, are checking um, about the residuals, what you see is that the residuals um, start here uh, large, 0 0.43, and then they decrease every time. And what we checked is, that what we made sure is that the residual at the end is less than 0 uh, 0.1. Okay, so, um, so that way uh, we get our approximations. Okay, so let's start looking at some um, actual uh, sequences and what they look like. So what we're looking at here is when the um, coefficient is very negative. So the coefficient is negative means that the uh, season is late. So indeed, when you look at these um, graphs, let's let me uh, zoom here. So if you look at um, at this one, let's say, you see that uh, this is the the first uh, approximate. This is the mean down here. So this is this is a place with a lot of snow. And, um, and this one still keeps the maximum around here. And, um, but when we add the um, uh, C2, what you see is that it pushes the, 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 um, the, the season, the peak of the season, to be later. Okay? And if you look at the uh, target, which is the actual measurement, you see that that's really how it is. So the target is to is to the right of the of the general mean and this is something that you'd see in all of them okay so in all of those you see that this is these are years that have a late uh, snow season okay so that uh, gives us a little bit of confidence that this is really what is going on let's see the other extreme so in the other extreme uh, this coefficient here c2 is very large that means that the season is early. And so if you see, if you look at um, these figures here, you see that indeed uh, the season is early in all of those. So that's uh, the important thing. Basically, um, what we realize from this analysis is one of the important uh, descriptors of how the snow depth behaves is uh, whether it is uh, an early season or a late season. Now let's look at uh, coefficient uh, 3. So as we said, coefficient 3 uh, describes, we believe, um, whether the season is, is short or long. Okay, so we're doing a similar filter, but on a residual 3 and coefficient 3. And uh, here is what we get when the uh, coefficient 3 is very negative. Okay, so these are all the negative ones. And you see that basically, the season here is relatively long, right? You see that basically um, it is it it goes it's uh, it goes from from early in the season to late in the season. While if we look here, uh, the values are very large. You see the season here tends to be uh, very short. Okay, so the season is short if the if the third coefficient is large. Okay, so here we basically 
uh, convince ourselves that there is really that information that is captured in the um, second and third eigenvectors. If we could do the same thing for the first one, and I encourage you to do that, and then you'll see a very intuitive, simple thing that if you have a large first coefficient, then you have more snow, and if you have a small uh, a negative coefficient, then you have uh, less snow than the average. Okay, so we saw what um, uh, coefficient what what coefficient two and coefficient three uh, do, and um, you can check that also coefficient one behaves the way that we intuitively described. But um, this is all uh, if the things fit the the if the data fits our model well, and. Um, the other thing that we um, uh, often want to do is we want to actually check this goodness of fit. So we're going to basically say, okay, how how well does the does the do the first three component um, represent the data? How 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 well do they approximate the data? So and we're going to sort according to that. So this is what we're doing here. We're basically uh, just sorting according to the residual three. So we're not here doing a threshold on the residual. We're just sorting according to it. And, um, and then we're showing uh, here um, what are the uh, three coefficients and what is the residual. So the residual uh, here is very, very small. It's, um, it's the smallest uh, it can be here. And then if you go to the other uh, extreme, the tail of the list, uh, then the table you'd see uh, large numbers. Okay, so we're going to look at both of them. So first we're going to look at um, the best fit. And uh, here are cases in which there are the best fit. So what you see in these cases, uh, let's take one of them, let's say uh, these. And uh, what you see is that when you get to the C2, to the red line, the red line is almost exactly on the purple line. So these are very good approximation, or we would say our model fits the data very well. Okay, our model of three eigenvectors fits the data extremely well. And, um, and so those are kind of archetypical um, examples. Those are the examples that behave uh, very much like the model. On the other hand, if we go to the worst fit, what we see are the outliers or the noise or the things that don't fit the data. Okay, so what we see here um, is that basically there is, there is uh, the, the data it's, uh, is very sparse in these cases, right? So if, we, if I zoom in here, you see basically the, the, most, of the, most of the target is undefined, right? So it's defined here during the summer, and then there is a spike, but it's not defined elsewhere. And here, similarly, there is a spike. And, uh, and so basically, and, and here we have something that is just very atypical um, and, and missing a lot of the values here. So indeed, when we look at the residual here, it is close to one. It is very large residual. And, um, and these are things that definitely don't fit our data. Now, it might be that they don't fit our data because uh, there is so much missing data. So that uh, is one way to deal with it. You can basically try to say, okay, if I require that there would be at least uh, out of the 300 days in the year, let's say I require at least 250 days would be defined, um, then you'd probably get different things, probably things that have to do with a measurement equipment malfunction or some other strange things. Okay, so we've uh, looked at these um, at these reconstruction and for for sets of uh, um, sequences that we selected according to different criteria. Now we're going. I'm going to show you a different way to look at it. You take a particular sequence, but then you play around with the parameters, uh, with the coefficients. So this is um, this little widget here that, that uh, uh, you have also in your notebook. And what is it? Basically, right now, 
um, what all we see is the red line is the um, right. So the, the red line is essentially the mean, and then this line is the actual uh, thing that happened that year. Okay, so now we can slide these sliders, and first we're looking at the first coefficient that explains how much snow there was. And so there was, of course, much more snow than the mean, and so now we get this, this approximation. So this is an approximation with just one uh, coefficient, a one eigenvector. Um, and now if we add the second one, it changes things a little bit because the season tended to be early, but it's not really, it's also snowed a lot late in the season. The final one is this one that makes this makes the sequence more or less um, flat. So this this year, uh, this approximation tells us that this year was the the snow uh, fell more or less um, uh, equally across the, the the whole season. Okay. So um, by moving around these sliders, you can visualize how well uh, the, the, the eigenvectors uh, approximate a particular uh, sequence. You can get a much better understanding. And when you go in the future and try these things on completely different data sets, you can use this um, widget to uh, help you understand uh, what are your eigenvectors. So that's uh, what I would like to suggest to you that you have many uh, measurements available to you and uh, uh, many years and stations. And so uh, try things out. See, see what, what, you can, you, what you can find out. So uh, we're going to save the decomposition uh, before we go further because we're going to use them in later notebooks uh, to represent uh, the, to further study um, what is the dependence of, uh, of these, uh, of these um, coefficients on other things like uh, location or the distance from the ocean. So uh, that's uh, basically just a saving. And um, in the next video, uh, we're going to uh, look a little bit more um, into um, how to use the coefficients that we got to um, study various, uh, various things. So I'll see you then.